Hi students, my name is Parindra. So in this video, I am going to explain about Plasmodium vivax in mosquito face. So in previous video, I have explained about Plasmodium vivax in man face. So people who didn't watch that video, please watch it and then come to back to this video. And the link will be provided in the description box. Okay. So now, so Plasmodium vivax in mosquito face. We know that this Plasmodium vivax will occur in two phases. One in human being and another one in in mosquito. So that phase is called as plasmodium vivax in man face and now this phase is called as plasmodium vivax in mosquito face so what happens in the mosquito so what is the role of plasmodium in mosquito is called as plasmodium vivax in mosquito face so let us have a brief and complete information i'm going to explain in this video so please watch this video till the end okay so you can understand clearly so i already done a video upon this uh, plasmodium vivax in mosquito so uh, i have I uh, have gained some more information regarding this Plasmodium vivax in mosquito face. That's the reason I'm re-uploading this topic. Okay, so so let us consider a female Anopheles mosquito, right? So this female Anopheles mosquito will go and bite the malaria patient. So who is the malaria patient? Malaria patient is the person or a human being where the Plasmodium vivax in man face has been occurred right so plasmodium vivax in man face has occurred in that particular human being and hence that patient is attacked with a disease called as malaria hence that person is called as malaria patient fine so now when this female anopheles mosquito will go and bite malaria patient then what will happen then we know that he is attacked with malaria so gametocytes are mainly present in this particular human being right gametocytes are present so how these gametocytes are produced because plasmodium vivax in man face has been occurred in this particular patient that's the reason i'm always saying you that firstly watch that video such that you can understand how the gametocytes are mainly present in that particular human being right so once this female anopheles mosquito bite the malaria patient then that gametocytes you know female anopheles mosquito will suck the blood from the malaria patient right it will suck the blood from the malaria patient so in that blood gametocytes are present see male gametocyte and female gametocyte both are present so that male gametocyte and female gametocyte which are mainly present in the blood of malaria patient will enter into the gut of female anopheles mosquito because it is the it is sucking the blood from the malaria patient okay so from that gut of the mosquito it will enter into the crop of the mosquito which one these gametocytes right so as these gametocytes will enter into the gut of the mosquito then it will enter into the crop of the mosquito for human beings how the stomach is there similarly in mosquito crop will be there fine and once these gametocytes enter into the crop of the mosquito then the plasmodium vivax in mosquito face begins right so how many stages are there four stages are there so what are they gametogony fertilization formation of oocinity and oocysts sporogony so these are the four stages which are mainly involved in this plasmodium vivax in mosquito face okay so this plasmodium vivax in mosquito face is also called as ross cycle so why it is called as ross cycle because it was discovered by a scientist called as ronald ross and he was also awarded with nobel prize for his discovery on plasmodium vivax in mosquito face so without any late now i'm going to explain about plasmodium vivax in mosquito face life cycle i mean this ross cycle so concentrate so i have said you right once female anopheles mosquito will bite malaria patient then gametocytes which are mainly present in that patient will enter into the crop of the mosquito so this is a crop of the mosquito okay so this is a crop of the mosquito so this is a male gametocyte and this is the female gametocyte so may, remember male gametocyte will be always small in size and female gametocyte will be always large in size okay so both of this female gametocyte and male gametocyte will enter uh, into the crop of the mosquito so now what will happen so now here this female gametocyte will get transformed into female gamete 
it will get transformed into female gamete remember this gametocytes will get transformed or converted into gametes okay so that particular gamete only will undergo the process of the fusion so now here the female gametocyte will get simply transformed into female gamete so it is okay with this now coming to this male gametocyte there is a process which is involved to get converted into male gamete so how this male gametocyte will get converted into male gamete there is a process involved and that process is called as x flagellation so what do you mean by this x flagellation i am going to explain you the step by step of the process of this x flagellation so listen properly okay so now this male gametocyte right it consists of nucleus so this inside one is nothing but the nucleus and that particular nucleus will undergo several divisions so as the divisions has been occurred then that one nuclei will undergo the division and forms eight daughter nuclei it forms eight daughter nuclei and those eight daughter nuclei are called as pro nuclei they are called as pro nuclei so now this pro nuclei if you keep this pro nuclei aside now this fem the one of this male gametocyte what will happen you know that particular uh, you know all of that pro nuclei which has been formed will move towards the peripheral region it moves towards the peripheral region and that peripheral region is nothing but the periphery it is called as periphery okay so now as it moves towards the peripheral region then all of that uh, you know what uh, the body of this male gametocyte will get flexed over in such a way that it leads to the formation of eight flagella eight flagella so remember each male gametocyte will can form only eight flagella only eight flagella remember because as if you see here that particular one nuclei has formed eight daughter nuclei which are called as eight pro nuclei right so similarly eight flagella will only be formed once it under once it undergo the process of this x flagellation so now each of the flagella will get each of the pro nuclei so as if you see here properly which i which i am going to zoom you here right now so listen properly here this is one of the flagella second flagella third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth so totally eight are there right so for each of the flagella each of the pro nuclei has been entered into that flagella right so for each flagella as if you say this is brown color dot this is another this is another so in each of the flagella each of the pro nuclei has been entered right and now what will happen now this all of this flagella will leave this male gamete all of this flagella you know all of this flagella will move will move away from this male gametocyte okay it will get detached from this male gametocyte so in this way uh, you know what all the flagellas will be removed so once they are removed it is not called as flagella it is called as male gamete right so once it is att attached to this male gametocyte then it is called as flagella only but once it is detached from this uh you know what this male gametocyte then it is called as male gamete then it is called as male gamete so finally from the male gametocyte male gametes are formed so all of these are nothing but the male gametes now here the actual scenario will start so this is the female gamete which has been formed from the female gametocyte now this male gamete and this female gamete will undergo the process of fusion and that process is called as fertilization it is called as fertilization by using this fertilization cone which is present in the female gamete this male gamete will enter into that fertilization cone and the process of fertilization begins and this particular fusion which occurs in this fertilization is called as anisogamy so why it is called as anisogamy because the size of this both of the gametes are completely different so as if you can see here the structure and the size of male gamete so this is a male gamete and this is a female gamete are they both are looking same regarding the size and structure no hence the fusion between this both male and gam male gamete and female gamete is called as anisogamy okay fine now once the anisogamy i mean the fertilization has been done then it leads to the formation of zygote as if you can see in the case of human beings it leads to the formation of embryo once the fertilization has been done similarly here the fertilization will be done in similar uh, where it leads to the formation of zygote okay it leads to the formation of zygote and one more important point which i have missed over here is that here the male gamete which has been detached from this male gametocyte uh, will have a special function called as locomotion it can exhibit 
locomotion where it is motile motile in nature such that as it is motile as it has a capacity to move then it moves toward this female gamete and then it gets fused over there which leads to the formation of zygote and now this zygote which has been formed will be non motile which means it cannot move it doesn't have capacity to undergo the function of movement it cannot move which is called as non motile right so as it cannot move then it will be inactive for certain period of time then after 18 to 24 hours this particular zygote which is non motile in form will get converted into vermicule and this vermicule is also called as ookinity it is also called as ookinity and now this ookinity which has been formed from the zygote is motile right so the zygote is non motile and now this ookinity which is also called as vermicule is motile in nature fine so as it is motile in nature which means it can exhibit the movement body movement so it will move towards the crop wall of the mosquito so basically this is a crop right and it moves towards the crop wall of the mosquito and it will get settled over there for a particular period of time right and now what will happen after some particular period of time then uh, you know uh, 50 to 500 oocyst will be developed right 50 to 500 oocyst will be developed so why it is called as oocyst because it contains cyst wall around its uh, around its around its body right so basically as if you can see here this is green green color which is called as ookinity around this green color body there is a cyst wall which has been arised which is orange color and that is called as cyst wall so not only one i have drawn only one over here totally 50 to 500 oocyst will be developed and it will get settled on the crop wall of the mosquito right so now here this particular new uh, con uh, oocyst contains nuclei right and now this nuclei undergoes a reduction division which is meiotic division and that meiotic division will be followed by mitotic division so by this you can understand both meiotic division as well as the mitotic division will be done in such a way that the number of nuclei will be increased and to all of these nuclei there is a cytoplasm which will be surrounded for each of the nucleus right as if you can see here properly around each of the nuclei i have shaded with pencil right so each of the nuclei is surrounded with pencil region and that pencil region is nothing but the cytoplasm where each of the nuclei is surrounded with cytoplasm and the together units all of these are nothing but the units called as sporoblasts right they are called as sporoblasts and now this sporoblast will get developed into sporocyst inside the inside inside the uh, you know what cytoplasm of this particular uh, oocyst itself now it is further called as sporocyst so why it is called as sporocyst so oocyst and sporocyst they are completely different because in oocyst only one nuclei is present but if you see in the case of sporocyst that nuclei has been uh, divided several times by mitosis and meiosis it leads to the formation of sporoblasts hence it is called as sporocyst here the cyst will be common because there is a presence of cyst wall around it okay so now several sporoblasts has been formed right and now that nuclei will be completely developed in order to form sporozoids so what are these these are nothing but the sporozoids i mean all of this pencil color uh, pencil shaded things are nothing but the sporozoids right so from this sporoblast sporozoids will be formed so now the uh, the number the the number of that sporoblast will be increased and increased so why it is going to increase because uh, you know it undergoes a rapid division where uh, many numerous number of sporozoids will get uh, formed so as the number of sporozoids is going to be increased then what will happen then this sporocyst will get ruptured it cannot bear uh, more and more number of sporocyst right i mean the sporozoids so right so that's the reason the sporocyst the wall of that sporocyst will get completely ruptured it will get ruptured i mean it will get broken down so once it gets broken down then what will happen then inside the sporozoids are present right all of that will come out right so e remember this is one of the most important point remember each of the sporocyst each of the sporocyst will release 10000 sporozoids right after rupturing of each of the sporocyst it it releases 10000 sporozoids so by this you can understand 
only one sporocyst will release 10000 sporozoids if there are two sporocyst then it releases 20000 sporozoids if there are three sporocyst it releases 30000 sporozoids right and not only this i have said you right there are no, there are not only one oocyst 50 to 500 oocysts are present in the crop of the mosquito so several number of uh, you know sporocyst will be developed not only one several number of sporocyst will be developed so from each of the sporocyst 10000 sporozoids will be released out so by this you can understand how many sporozoids has been releasing uh, by the each of the cycle right and now what are the sporozoids will be done will be will be doing now all of the sporozoid will move to the hemocyl of the mosquito hemocyl is nothing but the blood of the mosquito right so once it enters into the blood of the mosquito then it moves towards the salivary gland of the mosquito now once this mosquito will again go towards fresh human being i mean non malaria patient who is not affected with malaria fresh human being then if this particular infected mosquito which contains this sporozoids will infect human being fresh human being then it will release the sporozoids to that human being then plasmodium vivax in man face will begin in that particular human being right and now that human being will be infected with malaria right so this is how the process of plasmodium vivax in mosquito face will happen so each and every point has been included in this video i hope this video is helpful for you and if you like this video like the button of this video and subscribe to my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates thank you